say it mad. Hmm. That gets my goat. My goat. Get my goat. All right. So, hey, everybody. I'm Big Anglovich. Yes, you are. The biggest Anglovich. You have no idea. <laughs> and I'm Rich Outfield. Welcome back. This, this is, is that. This is that. My goat. Yes. Uh, welcome to the show. These are our new microphones. Sorry. <laughs> In the old days, if we talked over each other, one of us was screwed. Yeah. But now... Now, now we're the, both screwed. Oh, wait. <laughs> but now we can raise one person up or lower one person or skip ahead a tiny bit so that both of us can be heard. Yeah. That's kind of amazing. Thank your daughter for giving us her high school musical <laughs> seven ninety nine plastic microphones. Better than the ones that you paid money for. <laughs> uh, so I guess... What were we doing? We were speaking on karaoke. Oh, geez. Had I completely made an S, S of myself? An essay? Had I... Hey, essay. What's up? Hey, man. Vato. Hey, brother-in-law can get it for you wholesale. Had I, have I made an ass of myself yet? I think you're um, well on your way to that eventual goal. So okay. why don't you continue on that merry way? Okay. I got to warn people this will not be entertaining in the slightest. <laughs> Scaryoke was actually... You would pick the genre of music, whether it was rock, country, uh, R&B, or alternative. Mm -hmm. Those were the four options. And then there was a list of 30 potential songs, and you would draw out of a hat a number that would correspond to one of those right. songs. So it was pure chance what song you would get. And I went through and I looked at all the list of songs in each category, and I decided that rock was the category that I knew the most songs on. There were probably six songs on the list of 30 that I did not know. Two or three of those I had heard before. They're, they're like the Evanescent song, You Never Call Me When You're Sober, was on there. I had heard that song, but I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. So what I decided to do was really focus on like the six songs that I didn't know. Download the songs, listen to them a few times, practice them, try and get it so that if I drew one of those songs, you know, I wouldn't make an idiot of myself. And I talked to a guy there that night and he had done the opposite. He's like, no, I picked like the 10 songs that I knew the best. And I practiced those just in case I got those. Now, to me, that didn't make any sense because if you know the song, why do you practice it? Mm -hmm. But to him, what I did didn't make any sense because you're not going to perform well a song you don't know. So I don't know. But in each category, 15 songs were by a male artist and 15 were by a female artist. So you had a 50-50 chance of getting... A the, song meant for a girl? Yeah. And so there was like a 45, 48-year-old dude, heavy set guy, who got that Evanescence song. And it is high. I, I don't even remember how it goes. You love me. So something. You love something. How does it go? <laughs> something like that. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, go on. I'm, I'm sorry. If announcer man were here, he would be saying, no singing, please. But the whole thing is about singing. So it's kind of have to be done. And you know, the song that I absolutely didn't want to get was called Simple Man by Leonard Skinner. I thought you wanted to avoid the uh, Janis Joplin song more. Well, it was kind of sixes because... The Janis Joplin song, I at least knew the chorus of because it's more than I, I listened to her sing it and I understand that the woman is dead and I understand that the woman is beloved, but she was not a singer. <laughs> she might have been a, a songwriter or whatever, but it was horrible what I heard. <laughs> and I listened to it and I thought, oh no, how I, I can't even hear a tune here. And then luckily the chorus would come in and I'd be like, oh, okay, okay, that I identify as music. <laughs> but the simple man thing was kind of the same way. Not that the guy couldn't sing, but I couldn't make heads or tails of a tune and like follow it. It just felt like maybe one of those songs that people had just made up as they're going along and it doesn't have a chorus and it doesn't repeat and all that. And, and if you're a fan of that Skinnerd song, and you think that I'm full of crap. That's probably right. But I didn't grow up with it. I don't know uh -huh. the song. I kind of like that song myself. I haven't heard it enough to know it very well. But I could go, simple kind of man. Well, that's, that's more than I could about all done. I can do for it. No, 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 no. Well, see, as far as I if could you go. had Sam Beckett into my body for Simple <laughs> Man, it would have been fine. But then I'd have that freaking annoying uh, Cylon circling around me talking all the time, and I'd be too distracted to Did sing. you not like Al? <laughs> Sam! <laughs> Mona! Angela! Oh, you see what you did that? Wait, I did it too. <laughs> so the song that I ended up actually getting was... I Hate Myself for Loving You by Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. 
And it was not a song that I had practiced because, you know, I'm familiar with that song. Mm -hmm. But I should have practiced it. And you know what? How much time was I supposed to put into this thing? I I work. You know, I asked a couple of the guys, did did you practice these things? And he was like, yeah, I'm just naturally talented. (laughs) And And you said, but but I'm not. Have you ever listened to my podcast? (laughs) I Hate Myself for Loving You uh, was easy to sing. It wasn't like super high range or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, even though it was a female singer, yeah, you got away with yeah, it. Yeah, because one of the songs was uh, Tell Me Lies, Tell Me Sweet Little Lies by Fleetwood Mac. And a dude got that one too. Uh-huh. A big, hairy, hairy fat, fat, bearded, yeah, iron worker. Unemployed since the day he first started working. Wearing a hard hat, carrying a lunch pail. Yeah, he had, you, he had so much ass crack showing that, you know. <laughs> and he was up there. He actually had to put on that Stevie Nicks dress with all the flowy oh, yeah. shawl type stuff too. So it was rough. See, that one was a hard one because it was high. And luckily he knew the song and, and he gave it a college try. Do people still say the, the old college try? I don't know. I think that just refers to binge drinking now. I don't, I don't know that that actually means it talks it about best. experimenting with the same yeah, sense. Yeah, it's just the old college try is, yeah, just seeing if you're actually straight or gay. You, got give to it try, the, you yeah. have to give it the college try before you get out of college, just so you know. Those were the days. <laughs> I wish you could go back there. Those were the best days of my life. I, yeah, I didn't do badly, really, but I didn't do well on the I hate myself for loving you. There were a lot of like, ooh, uh, yes, and that. <laughs> And unless you really, really know the song, it was hard for me to remember what uh, it's got to sound like, you know? Do you I, have to hit those right? I mean, are those things you can just freestyle? Well, see, with? that's a frustrating thing because they had judges and the judges all voted on, you know, how well you did the song, and what your stage presence was and how into it the audience was. You know, it was like mm-hmm. a three-tier thing. And originally there was like a four-tier thing. And the fourth one was... <laughs> What? Do you remember that show? It was all about lip sync. Uh, putting on the hits. Putting on putting on the lips. Putting, But they would do that at the end of every... For originality, a seven. For lip sync, a six. Still way better than what your wife watches. <laughs> I can just imagine the judges doing that. For originality. Well, uh, gratefully... A zero. <laughs> yes. Gratefully, we never got to see their score. So if I got it like a two <laughs> or something like that, I would never know it. You know, you can always... Tell yourself, well, I was probably fourth place. Somehow my mother, disguised as the uh, Russian judge, got in there and gave me a bad score. And, uh, I think it was the, the dismount. dismount. Oh. Were you... Angela! <laughs> Don't be silly, Adrian Peterson. I didn't win. Oh. But the screen with the lyrics was just right there where the judges could see it. And that wasn't really fair because... If you screwed up, everybody knew. Uh-huh. And they should be watching you or you should be the only one that know. You know what I mean? It's like in a play, if you go off book or, or, or you forget your line or whatever, most of the time the audience is not going to know it unless yeah. there's this long silent unless pause you really or you blow a line or whatever. And sometimes that happens. And, you know, if it's Shakespeare or whatever, you know, some guy in the audience will know what the next line is or whatever. <laughs> but it should almost never happen. They'll and know so, if you just go off book and start making stuff up to fill space. Suddenly it because starts all to of make a sudden, sense. It's not iambic pentameter. It's just it's a, a limerick. <laughs> oh, look what we did there. You owe me a Coke, Jinx. Okay, go. I don't like Coke. I like the powdered kind. Yeah. I like snorting it. I like shooting I it. I just don't like drinking it. Uh, so, okay, now back to me saying I didn't win. But, you know, I, the audience got into it. It was fun. And most important, though, she did calm down to... And and there was no... Oh, sorry. You were going to say something else. She did come down to the karaoke bar, and there was no pretending that she was there for somebody else. It was obviously for me. I was the only person in her circle of friends. You mean Danny didn't come? He did not. He didn't show up. Oh. And so that was kind of neat. And my sister and her husband also came... For fun, and, and he got so so plastered that it was it was embarrassing. It was it was beyond. It was it was almost scary <laughs> how drunk he got because at one point the night was over and he disappeared. 
people are going home. My sister is wondering, did he get a ride with somebody? Like, hey, please check the restroom. See if he's in there kind of thing. And he wasn't. You know, they're knocking on the stall, looking under the stall. You know, going, hey, get the hell out of here. Putting my eye to the glory hole to see if my brother-in-law is there. And you have no idea how much alcohol this guy put away. Easily over a gallon. Bottles and bottles of beer. And then he mixed it with vodka and shots. And, and I guess you're not supposed to mix these things because uh-huh. – it, it makes you all the drunker. Your body, I guess, is able to tolerate the hops and the, the pissy Budweiser. <laughs> Wait, what was the beer, the Adrian Peterson commercial? Oh, it wasn't beer. Ooh, anyhow, anyhow I was trying to reconnect with this girl and at the same time trying to help my sister find her husband and keep my brother-in-law from fighting my other sister's ex-boyfriend. He poured beer on my leather jacket he started. He took his credit card and he started buying rounds for everybody, for people he didn't know. And uh, my sister tried to get them to take the credit card away. And then they're like, no, it doesn't have your name on it. It's his name. And so it's <laughs> like, oh, no. Like, no, uh, we're actually starting to put tips on it for ourselves as well. And we're not going to let that dry up. Yeah, you could do any number of things on this. The, you know, he made a lot of friends when you're giving away <laughs> free alcohol. Right. And and he got really loud. It was kind of embarrassing, but at the same time, please, there's a girl right here. She came to see me. Please give me a chance to do something about this. Okay, come on. And I don't know. We've talked for a long, long time. Maybe it's I should. Right. No, I keep should going, I just man. quit and we can you come can back another time? You can make it in two or whatever, but we'll just go ahead and finish this uh well, thing it's out. not like there's some great exclamation right, point. That's ending. why you just need to finish it. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I was saying that she had to go home and I had lost my brother-in-law at the same time. You know, the night was over. The bar was closed. The karaoke contest was over. So aside from me saying, don't go, don't go home, please, there was nothing I could do. Right. So I at least said, well, hey, help, help me look for my brother-in-law. You know, we'll walk together and, and chat. And, and she said, hell no, Rishafield. Well, it, it's winter, and it's difficult to be romantic if you're me. <laughs> but we walked out to the car, and I talked to her, and, and she's like, you know, I really got to go. I was like, okay, I, yeah, I, I know you got to go. And, and I had my chance to be a real <laughs> podcaster, and she says, and you blew it. It, it was very similar, actually, to those words. Oh. Uh, she made reference to the chance that I once had with her and, and how much I blew it and – I was like, all right, well, hey, thank you for coming out to see me. I, you know, I, I really appreciate it and uh, drive safe and, and maybe I'll see you again next time. And, and then she was gone. And I walked back into the bar and we were asking the employees if they would look in the employee only section and the kitchen and stuff and see if my brother-in-law was there and not, not there. So my sister said, well, I guess he made one of these great friends that he bought beer for and they drove him home. I... She had his jacket with his cell phone in it, which I guess he had left at the bar. So there was no way to call him. Uh-huh. I said, okay, well, what should we do? And she's like, well, let's just go home and hope that he calls or he turns up. And we went and just beyond where the car was parked were these bushes. And my brother-in-law was in the bushes. So I saw his legs. And I was like, oh, geez. And she went over there and she yelled at him. And, you know, we were looking all over. We didn't know what had happened to you. You, you don't even have your coat on. And he didn't care. The only thing that he cared about was, oh, Rish, you are so bad with girls. Man. <laughs> I guess he had heard my parting. Hey, thank you for coming. And I, 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 I appreciate you. Uh, uh, and he thought that was so funny <laughs> that he is like, you didn't know I was there. And I heard you and you suck. <laughs> and I did. I sucked, I guess. Um, the, the drive home was awful and yeah, I won't really go into details because it ceases to be funny when it becomes, when the truth comes out about how effing drunk my brother-in-law was, but I did, uh, make a bed for him in the basement and put a garbage can by the bed and a plastic bag in the garbage can. And, and yeah, he didn't even get under the covers. I don't know why I made the bed. He just was gone. He was out of it until like two in the afternoon the next day. So there was that. A side of my brother-in-law I hadn't seen before. But uh, who knows if the circumstances had been – I don't know who I'm kidding. Even if the circumstances <laughs> had been – if the righteous brothers had gotten up at the stage and said, this one's for rich. Oh, never close your eyes. 
Oh, oh even better, yes. My darling. Apparently, he had hungered for her love. I still would not have scored. And I, I, you're shaking your head because, dude, you are the man now, dog, when it comes to women. And, and our mutual friend, who no longer has hair, talks endlessly about how you, you had to smile. <laughs> and that's it. And a woman was yours. And I can't imagine what that would be like. I have fantasies where that sort of thing goes on. And I can't even pull it off in my fantasies <laughs> the way that you used to do that. And that is his fantasy. His fantasy tattoo is to moisten the breeches of the girls <laughs> that Big Anklevich would not have his way with. And well, those days are, are those days gone? But you walk into a store and you're not with your wife or whatever. And there's a girl. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not. There's a girl behind and I'm the. I'm feeling ju- randy. Oh yes. Do I make you horny, baby? And the girl behind the counter or whatever looks at you and she doesn't know if you're married or not. Did, do you get the girls like licking their lips and say, you know, it's like, hey, it's a Robert Palmer video all of a sudden. <laughs> I, and I've heard it said, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard it said that. There's nothing a woman finds more attractive than a wedding ring. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, interesting. That I've man's never heard married. That I'm going to do him. And I don't know why they sound like Jeremy Irons when they're <laughs> coming on to you, but this has not been your experience. Oh, I don't know. I think I'm too many years past fat to uh, have those kind of things go on anymore. I'm spoken for. I'm not looking at any other woman. You know me. Aww. You know me. See, you chose the wrong one, Morgan. <laughs> Morgan Electra is here. Uh, okay, well, that, holy poo, we've talked for a long time. Should I, should I stop? Will it ever stop? <laughs> Yo, I don't know. Turn off the lights and I'll glow. Come on. Wow. I've you want de-mailed. me to finish your ice, ice baby line, huh? Well, that, hasn't that song kind of come back in vogue now? Yeah, I think any song that the Glee cast decides uh, to sing comes back in vogue. See, I tricked you. You watch Glee too? No, I actually don't. I, I read your blog about it. Drunk! <laughs> you foiled again. <laughs> but yeah, there was some uh, Glee song that I saw a snippet of on a uh, commercial or something like that. And then all of a sudden the next day it's on the radio. I'm like, oh, there it is. Hey, how about that? I have never heard any of their songs on the radio or anything, but... They sell, like, MP3s, like hotcakes. Like, they're number one on iTunes all the time or something. I don't know how that happens. Well, on one of the competition nights, I sang Don't Stop Believin' by Journey. And somebody said, oh, the Glee song. Mm. You know, I like the show, but come on, well, man. At least people know the song. Yeah, anyhow, there was one last night of competition, and people went all out. Oh, they had costumes. They had brought props. They would have like entourages that would back up sing. Or one of them had a disco ball that a friend put up in the air on a fishing line. And then another friend put flashlights upon it, torches for you uh, British people, and so that it would spin and reflect so that it would be like a disco ball. Uh, one guy had this crazy costume to do the song that he was doing, there was a guy who did uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, and he brought out his keyboard in so they could do the slow stuff, and then tipped over the keyboard when it came time to do the middle part, and then reset it up at the end when it came to, to brought the house down. And oh. and I had no idea that people were going to take it this seriously. I, I had hoped that people would just have a good time, that it would be fun, that it's like, hey, there's a bunch of people going out to a karaoke bar singing, doing the best they can, and everybody else cheering. And if somebody's not good, we still cheer, because it takes something to get up there, right? But no, it was cutthroat. These people wanted to win. And, uh, oh, I did even worse on this last <laughs> night than I did with the, the Joan Jett song. It's one of those things. It's not like a great regret in my life. Unlike the thing with this girl, I could have done so much better. I, I don't think I could have won. And how can I compete with – there was some woman and she was singing a Celine Dion song and she was like ululating or whatever you call that. <laughs> you know what I'm ta- talking – what do you call that? Where he's like – you know, I, I can't even do it. But it was just you know the thing that would, that would shatter a, a, a wine glass uh-huh. in the cartoons. She was doing that. And I was like, wow, I would do Celine Dion right now. <laughs> So you know she was good. Yeah, that's beyond... uh... I like performing in front of people. 
mm-hmm. and I like making people laugh, and I like mm-hmm. you know I like to be center of attention. But it's usually self-deprecating. It's uh, you know, it's right. like you know, I'm not a rock star or anything like that. Let's all laugh at me together, kind of thing. And that, you know, I think I've carried that on to my podcasting. But there were people that were like, "No, love me, worship me, look at me," when they were up there. And uh, you know, that's got to be the feeling that these rock stars have, right? Just multiplied by thousands of people screaming or just chanting or looking at you with adoration. It's like, you know, you're not a man. You were a god kind of thing. And do you remember there was that night that we went to Comic-Con and Neil Patrick Harris got up there right after Dr. Horrible came out? The women were shrieking and squealing. <laughs> you know, like Edward Cullen had just come out for the <laughs> Twilight panel. And I leaned over to you. And do you remember what I said? No, I don't. Remind me. Should I remember? No, I said... <laughs> You know, he could have any woman in this room right now. Uh-huh. And do you remember what you said to me? <laughs> he could have any man in this room. No, no I don't know. What did said, I say? Well, this is Comic-Con. Why would he want oh. to? <laughs> Which was really funny. And, you know, that was kind of amazing. One of the guys who performed is actually in a band and he was really good. He had this kind of stage presence and charisma that I guess comes from professionally standing up there and, and working the audience up. And, and even if he completely flubbed the lines or if he didn't know the song like he did he his song was uh, she's a little runaway by bon jovi on the uh-huh. karaoke thing and he didn't know it at all so he just made up his own tune and rocked out and people were screaming and they didn't care that it wasn't the white words or the right tune or anything like that he's just he had him in the palm of his hand and and i could tell that this girl was into that and you know it's like how do i compete with that there's no way i can compete with oh did i forget to tell you this part before the guy went? <laughs> she wanted to talk to him this guy's name is todd and he's in a real band and she's like oh let's go talk to todd oh is that his name okay yeah that, that guy's cool so we went up and, and he was hitting on this girl this blonde girl um and uh he hit on her rather well uh, if you take my meaning because <laughs> they came in separate cars went home in one Ah. But, you know, she's like, hey, let's interrupt them. And I didn't get, why would you want to interrupt? She, he, Todd is obviously talking to this attractive girl. This is how clueless I am. I'm like, why, <laughs> why would you want to interrupt this? You know, he's, he's putting the mood. He's doing very well. And she's like, will you go up and interrupt? So I did. <laughs> and I was like, oh, sorry. I know you're talking. But uh, yeah, I just say, hey, how's it going? I shake my hand. I shook hands. And Todd leans into this girl and says, you're really cute. And then he leans back and he looks at me and he says, you two aren't married, are you? <laughs> and I was just like, the bravery, the audacity, <laughs> the confidence of saying that, of saying it, it. What if she were my wife right. and you said, you're really cute in front of my husband. Wait, you know what I'm saying, yes, though? Yes, I know he what did, He saying. just didn't care. I, I, and maybe you were like that 10 years ago. <laughs> I don't know. But I can't even conceive of being like that. Of it's like, oh, I'm sorry. And it's like, I was going to do her. But if you two are married... Maybe I won't. <laughs> it's like, I'll do this one instead. Or both. <laughs> both, yeah. Just depending on my mood. But anyway, she was just like, wow, this, she was eating this guy up. And, and I was jealous. So for a little while, I pretended that I was really into the blonde. Todd was into, and, and she said that she was into Todd. And I, I took her seriously. And it did bother me <laughs> because you and I were single and friends for a very short time. And I, and I, I never went to a mall with you or to a an amusement park with you or whatever and had girls stare at you and ignore me. That, that would have bothered me, and I probably would resent you to this day. But that's what it was like. It's like, there's no way I can compete with this guy. Anyhow, at the end of the night, she revealed to me that this was all a joke. This was all fun to see if I would become jealous, and it had worked. And I was like, oh, you made me jealous on purpose? And then I started questioning myself. Of, and so once again, failure. <laughs> well, at least you're consistent, though. That's good. I am consistently bad. Yes. <laughs> which I believe has been used to describe this very show. Yes. Get on those iTunes <laughs> re- reviews pages again. and Cool. Well, I guess we've been going for a while. Well, you and I have never gone karaokeing. We haven't yet. We keep meaning to and stuff it always doesn't work out. We had one time where it was 
certainly going to be that. And then you got you like your work schedule, and that was out the door again. And yeah, so we still haven't managed. You know, I don't know. You were how... going to drive down that last night. Of I the was, yeah. And we drew numbers, and I would be sixth that night. And so you knew that by the time you got there, that was you... well before I would make it, unfortunately. But e- even then, you know, in that case, I wouldn't have been able to sing myself if I wanted to. I don't know, though. I wonder if I'd be really good at uh, karaoke or not. I mean, I can sing okay. You've never done it? I've never gone to a bar and done it. Here and there, we've messed around. Like uh, one time you came over when my kids were still awake, and so we threw on a song. We started singing to it, and everybody was singing along. And I found that, wow, I don't know this song very well after all. Then we found a different song that I knew well enough to get by on, so that made me feel less bad. But, yeah, I, I wonder... How well I would do. It, well, see, if I'd get up there thinking I knew the song and then wind up going, oh, crap, I don't know this song at all. What do I do here? Where he says, ooh, 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 ooh. It, it is rough. It is difficult. And part of it, I guess, is just maintaining the illusion that it's all under your control. And if it says ooh, the way that you say ooh is the way that it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. When you're driving in your car and a song plays on the radio, it's so easy to sing along because even if you don't know what the next words are, you just kind of go silent yeah, for one just... second and you hear what the person says and suddenly you know it again. At least you have the words in front of you yeah. at a karaoke bar. That's good. Um, but yeah, so a lot of times the verses, you get in there and you're like, oh crap, how does the tune go at this point? Well, this is the bridge. Now it's different. I've realized that I don't know songs as well as I thought I do sometimes. Every time I try and do a karaoke, I did that with my daughter the other day. I was like, oh, she had fun that one time that we did it when Rish was here. So I got on like YouTube and found some kind of karaoke and we started singing one. And halfway in, I'm just like, oh, crap, I don't know this at all. It's neat, though, that you'll sing with your daughters. I'm a little bit jealous about that. So I threw on Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit. I could get all the way through that one. How? The the, the lyrics make no sense. They don't, but I know the tune. Oh, okay. (laughs) You just sing them to the tune, and that one I I knew well enough, so there's that. There are some songs that I, I think probably almost anybody could sing Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit. It's just one of those ubiquitous songs you know is one of those songs that everyone heard a hundred times a week at one point well we are old and i'm sorry the young people are now old enough that they could be too young to have yeah, known that yeah, song and still true. be at a karaoke bar we went to one in vegas and we convinced my cousin's wife to get up and sing a song and it was one that she had sung i guess a hundred times on uh, what's the video game called rock, rock band, band. And I guess in rock band, you can quietly hear the actual vocals yeah, or something like can. that. And she said that that's the way that she knew it. And without that, she didn't know the song at all. And I know that she was really embarrassed and never really <laughs> wanted to get up and do it again. And, of course, blamed me. <sighs> well. But that, that sort of thing is difficult. I guess if you're used to doing it the rock band way to have absolute silence there can really mess you up. And the song that I chose to sing, and I wish that I hadn't, I wish I had chosen to do a song that I could do with my eyes closed, you know, a song that I know the words of completely. I was going to say, like, Smells Like Teen Spirit, but nobody knows the words to that song. I don't even think Kurt Cobain knew the words to that song. He just made them up differently each time he sang it. But I chose Moni Moni by Billy Idol because I thought that that would be one that the audience, everybody could sing. I said, yeah. 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 You know what I mean? You can get the audience shouting, yeah, and, you know, Mone, Mone, ride your pony. Get a bony. Yeah, there you go. But I was wrong. I swear I know the song, but I didn't know it when the lyrics came up. (laughs) The the verses were unfamiliar to me. And I don't know if it's because Tommy James did it years and years ago. And this is the way that he sang it. And I was ending up doing the Tommy James version and the lyrics are different. But, oh, I crashed and burned. (laughs) You blew it. I had the chance to entertain the audience and I blew it. I would have done better singing All Out of Love by Air Supply. At least I know the lyrics to that one. All too well. And with that, I guess we will call it an evening. Or a night. Several (laughs) nights, perhaps. We've been going for over an hour, so we'll split this. All right. So thanks for listening, folks. 
Hey, yeah, thank you. And you have a good night. And, and you know what? Next week, maybe you can talk. I guess you had a long time of talking about your California experience, so maybe it's yeah. my chance. That's true. I went on and on and then on and on. And then after that, I went on and on. Yeah, you did. Okay, well, thank you for listening to me whine and complain. And now that the microphone goes off, I'll tell you how it really went. Ooh. So it's much, much worse. Spicy. You're like, oh, geez, you're even more pathetic than your character. <laughs> That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is.